Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today has been on the show before, but now she has a brand new book. It is called Simply Plant-Based. Her name is Dr. Vanita Raman, and please welcome her back to the show. Congratulations on this beautiful book. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, my pleasure. I love cookbooks in general, but I especially like them when doctors write them. Yeah, you know, it was really fun sort of taking off my doctor's hat and putting on my chef hat and just like cooking. It was really great to put everything together. I had a lot of fun with it. That's so great. Cause I, I love, you know, because like as, as a doctor, you want people to eat healthy and they, a lot of times they'll say, well, it's too hard. And you're like, well, I did it. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's actually the reason why I wrote the cookbook because I was working with all these patients and helping them. And I could see they really wanted to eat better. They really wanted to improve their health, but they were really struggling to put some food on the table that they would like. And I always thought, oh my gosh, if I could just bring you into my kitchen and feed you, I think you would see this is so much easier than it seems. And I thought, well, I can't feed everyone, but maybe I can give them some tools to help them feed themselves. And uh, that's where the cookbook came from. That's fantastic. Are these actual recipes that you serve your family? Every day. These are, this is how my family and I eat. And what I did was I picked our favorite recipes and um, I figured if they're good enough for my kids who, uh, you know, have more mainstream palate, then probably it's going to work for most people. That would be so cool. Like if every doctor that they ate a plant-based diet came out with a book or at least a few recipes that they could share. Yeah, I think that it would help people so much because people really do want to eat well, but sometimes they're just not sure how to begin. Yeah. Instead of prescriptions, recipes. Yes. I love that. (laughs) Is this the first book you've written? I've written others before it. So uh, I wrote two others before it. And then this is actually the, one of them was a cookbook. So this is a new and improved version of that. I think it's got great recipes, great pictures, and I'm hoping, you know, people can find it very helpful. That is great. How long did it take you to write? Because I've I've been writing a book for like 10 years now, (laughs) the same one. (laughs) You know, it, it, it was a little tricky for me because I'm one of those people who cooks without necessarily using recipes or thinking about it. I learned from my mother and we just kind of throw things together. So I had to stop, write down what I was doing so I could quantify it. And to me, that was the hardest part, but otherwise it was really fun and it came together faster than I thought it would. But um, I'm really happy it's out there now. And actually we use it in my family. Now, if I want someone else to do the cooking, I just tell them, hey, can you make this from the book? And it works out really well. That is a great idea. This recipe just... I have all the ingredients. It looks amazing. The cauliflower wings. Oh, yes. So good. So, and such a great way to get people to eat cauliflower. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you put cauliflower in an air fryer and it's a game changer. Yeah, definitely. Such, such a delicious vegetable, so full of nutrients. And it's a great way to enjoy it. Do your kids have favorite, do different recipes in the book are different favorites of your family members? Definitely. Actually, the one you just picked up is my daughter, one of my daughter's favorites. Uh, And then everybody loves the chili recipe, uh, the quesadillas, um, and then the lasagna, the kids devour it. So the veggie lasagna is always a hit. And I have to often make double recipes so that there's enough left over for me. And um, lately, we're really digging the tofu curry. It's just so easy to make. And it always hits the spot. So soothing and satisfying. Do you do any kind of batch cooking? I do. I do. So actually, sometimes what I'll do is uh, because I don't always have time to cook every day, especially if I'm making soups or sauces, uh, I'll make uh, double the recipe and then I will freeze half of it and I'll freeze it in easy to thaw containers So then a few weeks later, when I don't have time to cook, I'll just pull one out of the freezer in the morning. By the time I get home, dinner just needs to go in the microwave. And I know it's healthy stuff because I made it. So I don't know how anybody that eats, even if they're not plant-based, eats without batch cooking into some way. I mean, unless they're eating fast food, because how how do you just not know what you're going to have for dinner? I agree. You know, I think... (laughs) 
preparation is so important. If, if we just show up at home, we're exhausted, we're tired. And if there's nothing to eat, it's going to be so challenging. So always planning for dinner or even work or school lunches for me is just makes things so much easier. There's an old saying, preparation trumps motivation. I like that. Preparation trumps motivation. That is so true. If we're prepared, things go so much more smoothly. Yeah, because even if you're not motivated to eat healthy, if that's all you have in your fridge and you're hungry, pretty much you're going to eat it. So true. So true. And I think the worst feeling is when we're caught off guard without anything nutritious to eat and we're starving. And now it's that much harder to take care of ourselves. And that's when things can go wrong. So I, I like that. I'll have to put that on my refrigerator. I, I didn't make it up, but thank you. You have lots of fans watching today. A lot of people love listening and watching you on the PCRM exam room podcast. Oh, thank you. And, and thank you all for tuning in today and for the exam room live. You know, it's always so great to see everyone's comments and questions. Uh, and I'm always amazed at how well informed people are and the kind of terrific questions they ask. Uh, they just people are so interested in taking care of themselves. Oh. It, working at PCRM, does everybody bring their lunch? Uh, I wouldn't say everybody. Some of us do. Uh, some back before uh, the pandemic hit, we would actually have a vegan catering service bring lunch for us for purchase. So there was always a vegan option available, even if someone didn't feel like bringing it and it was healthy, which was terrific. Um, so I think it's half and half. It's a mix. And sometimes my favorite part is when we do potlucks. It's amazing. I was just going to say, do you, I mean, does Dr. Neil Barnard bring something to the potluck? You know what? He hasn't yet, but I think I need to bring that up. <laughs> Cause I would love to know what he eats for lunch or Chuck Carroll eats for lunch. I mean, do tell if you're allowed. Yeah. Well, I think Chuck would be happy to share, but Dr. Bernard, I'm not sure what he eats, but yeah, actually I have had a veggie burger with him once. So I can say for sure he does enjoy those. Right. Well, the thing is, is he, he works like, like every minute of every day. So you wonder if he ever has time to eat. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he's so motivated and so passionate and so committed to this mission that it's just terrific. Just watching him in action. Absolutely. He was on recently talking about the study that you guys did with soy and menopause. Mm -hmm. And I, I love, I love all the research you guys do and that Dr. Kaliova does. It's just, I love it. It's, isn't it amazing? I mean, just eating well, proving out in research studies to help with hot flashes or reverse diabetes or reverse heart disease. It, it makes perfect sense. And it's so much easier to do than taking medications. It must be a, a really fun place to work. You know, it is, I have to say, I feel very privileged and fortunate to work with such a terrific team who is so dedicated and committed. And we share this common goal of helping others eat better and changing the world really one meal at a time. It's really wonderful. That's so cool. Did you want to show one of your recipes now? Yeah, let's do this. Uh, so I recorded, um, uh, one of my favorite recipes. So let me share with everyone here. Um, I'm Dr. Vanitha Ramon, and I'm here to do some cooking demos for you from my new cookbook, Simply Plant-Based. In here, I feature a lot of easy to prepare, low fat and delicious vegan recipes. And I'm going to show you how to make roasted red pepper dip. This is a traditional Middle Eastern dip. It's made with roasted red peppers. It's very flavorful, very hearty. Now you may have had it before, but sometimes the restaurant versions can be high in fat. They may contain added oils. And here I'm going to show you how to make a lower fat version without any added oils. That's just as delicious, but very nutritious and also very easy to make. So let's get started. So the first thing I did was I roasted red pepper. So this is a red pepper. I took three of these and I roasted them in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 35 minutes. Now, depending on your oven, you may need to let them go longer. So we're going from this to this. And as you can see, they really shrink down when they're roasted. So we have three of these 
And what we're going to do is put them into our blender here. So I'm using a high powered blender and I'm going to remove the stems. I'm going to just open it up and scoop out some of the seeds. It's okay if some of them stay behind. I don't mind them. But the main thing is to get those stems out. So just sort of remove the stems like that, scoop out any significant seeds that you can and then throw it into the blender. So you can see peppers, like most vegetables, are 90% water, so there's a lot of water coming out. Next, we are going to add two slices of whole wheat bread. So this is super easy. I literally took two slices of whole wheat bread, I put them in the toaster, and they're a little crispy, a little dry, that's exactly how I want them. And I'll just crumble them up in here a little bit. But this blender is pretty powerful, so it can handle whatever I put in there. And next, we are going to add some walnuts. So the recipe calls for a quarter cup walnuts. Now what do you do if you have big chunks of walnuts like this? A quarter cup um, is hard to measure when we're dealing with big pieces of walnuts. So I just put them here in my mortar and um, you're using the mortar and pestle and just sort of crush them a little bit. I don't want to make them into a powder. I just want to make them into small pieces. So just a couple of minutes of that and this is what it looks like and I'm going to measure a quarter cup of that so a quarter cup and it was pretty accurate it came to just about a quarter cup we'll toss that in there and then we are going to take some Molasses. Now, if you wanted to use a lower fat version, this is already pretty low fat, but let's say you're allergic to nuts or you prefer to avoid them altogether, you could also use half a cup of extra firm tofu instead of using the walnuts. Now, the secret ingredient here is this pomegranate molasses that you can find in your local grocery store. And we need a tablespoon of this. So you will see as I pour this, it tends to be very thick and a little bit goes a long way. So I just want a tablespoon. So do you see how thick that is? It's sweet and very tart. And we want that combination of sweet and tart to really bring out the pepper flavor. Okay. And next we are going to add one garlic clove. So, I don't like to peel garlic. It's too much trouble, I think. So I buy peeled garlic. Very easy to work with. So we're just going to take one clove and toss it into the blender there. All right, and then we have half a teaspoon of cumin and half a teaspoon of salt. So this is cumin powder. You can buy it in the store in your spices section. We're just going to toss that in there. Toss in half a teaspoon of salt. And that's it. Doesn't look like much of a dip right now, does it? So let's let the blender do its magic. So I'm going to use this tamper to help it blend. It's really helpful here to get everything to blend together nicely. So a couple of minutes like that and it's looking a little chunky. I'd like it to be a little bit smoother so I'm going to help the blender a little bit by mixing things with my spatula. And, you know, you may be wondering, we didn't add any water to this, so what's helping soften everything? Well, remember, 
Vegetables are about 90% water, so it's the water from the peppers that's helping us out here. And let's blend it all. Our dip is now ready to be scooped out. So I'm just going to use my spatula and scoop it out into a serving bowl. This is really flavorful and you can enjoy it with toasted pita or on whole wheat toast. Um, can even try dunking veggies in it. It's just such a great way to get those red peppers. Um, in a really flavorful and satisfying manner. That looks so good. Yeah, thank you. I love that you gave options for low fat and also because people often do have nut allergies. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it, it's amazing substituting tofu for it works really well too. It brings in a little bit more water and it's just, it just as creamy and quite delightful. So try it both ways. What do people do when they don't have a gas burner though? How do they roast that red bell pepper? So I actually roasted it in the oven. Uh, so just in the oven, uh, you know, depending on your oven, I roasted it at 350 for about 25 minutes but you really want them to get slightly charred so the skin is coming off slightly. You may need to let it go longer or use a higher temperature, but um, you could even throw it on a barbecue grill. You would wanna wrap it in foil first so it doesn't get completely charred. Yeah, I see them sometimes in a jar, but then they have salt and, and they do taste better when you can do it yourself. Yeah, and, and they're so easy to do. And it's such a great way to enjoy these beautiful, colorful peppers. And this recipe works really well with orange colored peppers, too. You could even try green ones. Um, you can mix and match. It's really the, the pepper taste that brings it out. I heard that green bell peppers are not ripe. And that's why sometimes people get a little indigestion from them. You know, I've, I've heard that too. I've heard some people are more sensitive to green peppers. So if you're working with green peppers, maybe roast it a little bit longer, really get them very soft, or you could mix them up, maybe one green pepper to two red peppers. I usually just work with whatever I have in the fridge so that I can use it up and get the dip ready. But all green, that color, I wonder how that color would look. Kind of like um, kind of like a green gazpacho, if you've seen it, or uh, a little bit like a mushed uh, green pea dip. So, uh, you know, depending on how it's served, I kind of like the bright green. I wonder if you've ever tried yellow, just all yellow bell peppers. I, I have, and it comes out beautifully. Um, the, and to your point, the red and yellow are a little bit sweeter and milder in taste, and the green is a bit stronger. Yeah. Have you ever seen those tiger stripe ones that are yellow and orange at the same time? I have not, but that sounds they lovely. Are, they're so beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to look for that next time. This would be a great thing to, you know, I was thinking like to put on a cucumber round or a little endive leaf even. Ooh, that sounds really great. I, I love the idea of pairing it with those because uh, it has such a strong flavor and something like cucumber has such a mild or neutral taste. I, I like that a lot. And I was thinking with the end, I believe you could make it like a flower decoration. Mm. Putting, I don't, I just, that, that's how I always thinking like a chef. What can I tell you? You, you are, you're <laughs> making it so gourmet and beautiful, like a work of art. You know, I love pomegranate molasses. We have, a, 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 the gentleman is from Syria. So he has a store and he has lots of imports from the Middle East and pomegranate molasses is one of the things he sells. Yeah, it's really, it's such an amazing molasses to work with. It's so flavorful and it's very strong. So it's not terribly sweet, but it is sour and it just gives it such a wonderful flavor. Yeah, it's good stuff. It really is. Well, I love all vinegars though. I mean, really, I'm just a vinegar fan. And you have some great ones. I, I love the ones you, you have. And it's such a great way to flavor food without any added fats or oils. Uh, vinegar's great. I love the taste. 
I know. And I'm getting, you know, and, and I even use regular vinegar at times, apple cider or rice. I mean, I just, I didn't grow up liking vinegar, but that's because I was a sugar addict and obviously it's not sweet enough, but I really do like vinegar now. Yeah. You know, I, it's interesting you say that because I didn't grow up with vinegar either. I grew up in India and we always just put lemon juice and salt and pepper on our salad. Um, but then I really like vinegar now because it gives food a very complex flavor and it's a little bit sweeter without of course, having any added sugar in it. So it's just such a, it's so lovely. And it, uh, it gives food that slightly fermented taste, which I really like. Right. And supposedly there's health benefits too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, good for gut microbes. And just the fact that we're flavoring food with something that's low in sodium or virtually free of sodium has no fat in it uh, and very strong flavor. It's can't ask for more than that. Well, Victoria says, thank you for the recipe. And she wanted to know, do you practice intermittent fasting? I don't, Victoria, but um, I think there's some good evidence uh, to support it. Uh, now, the key with intermittent fasting is to, if you are going to practice it, is to limit the eating to the early part of the day. So 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. as opposed to noon to 8 p.m., uh, However, I do want to say, while there's some evidence supporting it, there is some that shows it doesn't make a difference. A study came out of UCSF a year ago that compared intermittent fasting to not intermittent fasting, and they didn't find a difference. So I think um, if you like it, if it works for you, why not do it? Uh, but the most important thing is to keep it low-fat plant-based because that we know works. We have a lot of evidence um, behind that. So I definitely recommend that. And I think of intermittent fasting as an added step. If it's something that works with your lifestyle, go for it. Right. In other words, don't intermittent fast if your diet is McDonald's. Exactly. Thank you. Good way to say it. Of course, probably that would still be a benefit because that'd be even one less meal there. But <laughs> do you see patients at the Barnard Medical Center? I do. We are a full-fledged primary care practice, and we now see patients from over 15 states, and it's just really wonderful. We, uh, one of the things we discovered with the pandemic was using telehealth to, to see patients. So, for example, I see patients from 11 states, including California, Texas, New York, and it's been such a great way to provide good care to people from everywhere. And Many patients are coming to us because they're looking for a plant-based provider to support them. And they, you know, they've had a hard time finding someone locally. And so we see a lot of patients from around the country. So you can, you can do telemedicine in 11 states? I can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Do you happen to have that memorized? I'll put that in the chat in the show notes because yeah, that, I do. So uh, if we start from the West coast and go East, uh, I am licensed in the state of Washington, California, Illinois, uh, Pennsylvania, Texas, uh, then New York, DC, Maryland, Virginia, Georgia, Florida, I think I got 11. I may have missed something. Um, but yeah, so it's been really wonderful to provide that service. And I think patients really appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. I just added that to the show notes because that, that people would love to know that if they're in one of those 11 states. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Well, you know, you have another recipe for us. Yeah. Are we ready for that? Absolutely. Okay, let's do it. Now I'm going to show you how to make a delicious soup from my new cookbook, Simply Plant-Based. This is a really hearty soup. It's uh, full of nutrients. And here is the recipe that we're going to follow. It's Italian brown lentil soup with vegetables. Very easy to put together and takes about 20 minutes to make. It's so wonderful in the fall and winter. Uh, so it's great for this time of year. So let's get cooking. I have here brown Italian lentils. These are great. Uh, I've already pre-rinsed them, so they're a little bit dry now. And they're brown on the outside, orange on the inside. They take about 20 minutes or so to cook. 
So what we're going to do is add those in here. I've got my cooking pan nice and warm on medium to high heat. And we are going to add a cup of celery to it. And then a cup, two cups of shredded carrots. I shredded these in the food processor, but you could also buy pre-shredded carrots or you could use chopped carrots, whatever is more convenient for you. It doesn't change the nutrition profile at all. And we are going to season it with four bay leaves. So one, two, three, four. And we are going to add some garlic granules. So I love these garlic granules that you can get. It's dried garlic, roasted, very easy to use. And we are going to add one tablespoon of it. This is a fairly large amount of soup, so one tablespoon. So much easier than peeling and crushing your own garlic, which is what I like about it. And we are going to use one and a half teaspoons of salt. Uh, I just use iodized table salt, but you could use uh, kosher salt or sea salt, whatever you prefer. So about one and a half teaspoons. And then we are going to use dried oregano, one teaspoon of this. And then we are going to add 10 cups of water to all of this. I've measured it out, but I have extra in case. Want to step away so you don't get splattered here. And that's it. Now, it doesn't really look like much of anything when we put this together. But what will happen with time is the lentils, as they cook, they release their creaminess, the starch comes out, and it just makes the broth nice and creamy and rich. And the herbs and spices in there will add flavor, and the veggies will give it a nice crunch. So now what we need is some time to let them cook. And I'm going to turn this up to the highest setting let it come to a boil and once it does put it on about medium heat and let it simmer and it'll take about 20 minutes so lentils are interesting depending on the kind of lentils you're cooking they may cook within literally five minutes to upwards of 40 minutes on the stove top it really depends the smaller they are the faster they cook the larger they are the harder they are the longer they take you can also pre-soak these these particular brown lentils, I don't pre-soak because 20 minutes to me is an acceptable time. But if you were to pre-soak them, they would cook faster. So uh, whatever is easier for you. We'll come back and check on these in a few minutes. It's been about 10 minutes since we started cooking the soup and I want to show you what it looks like. As you can see, it's boiling. It's starting to look different, like it's coming together more. The lentils are softening. The veggies are expanding in the water, but we still have a ways to go. As you can see, it's a little bit on the watery side and we want it to be thick and creamy. So I'm going to let it boil for another 10 minutes, which should help solidify it, thicken it a little bit. If you find it gets too thick, you can always add more water. If you find it's too watery, you can always turn up the heat and let the water evaporate more. So let's give it about another 10 more minutes. 20 minutes. Let's check on this. I covered it to help because the, as the water evaporated, it was getting thick and I wanted to help trap some of the moisture in. And we can see that this is looking nice and thick. This is the consistency that I like my soup at. Now, if you find this is a little too thick for you, you can always add more water to it. I'm actually turning off the burner now because I think it's right where I want it. And this is great. You can serve it by itself. It can be enjoyed with a baguette dunked in there or over quinoa or rice uh, or a pita bread. It's just such a hearty soup. The lentils are full of protein and fiber and the celery adds a nice punch to it. And of course the carrots give it a nice crunch. So 
What's great about this is there's no added fat, no oil, and it's very flavorful just using herbs and spices. Now, I like things a little bit sour, so I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of lime juice for me, but that's optional. I hope you enjoy it. Yep, that little squeeze of lime makes a difference. You know, I, I love that. And I love a dash of lime and everything. I think it's so refreshing and flavorful. Yep. They do that. There's a, there was a salad bar restaurant in LA and it didn't matter what you ordered. They always squeezed some fresh, half a fresh lime over everything before they gave it to you. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it in my water. I love it in my soups. Uh, it's just, it's so refreshing. Do you ever cook in an instant pot? I don't have an instant pot, but I have something similar, an electric pressure cooker, which works very similarly. And I use it almost daily. Right. I boil beans. I make rice in it, porridge with cracked bulgur wheat or groats or oats. Uh, just such a great device. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, well, you said you're from India. They, they, pressure cooking is very popular there, but a lot of times they use the stovetop ones. Yes. Yeah. So I grew up with that. You know, my mother used to cook all our lentils from scratch. There was no such thing as canned or frozen um, or pre-cooked lentils or beans. Everything was cooked from scratch and she would use the stovetop pressure cooker. Now the, the problem with those is they work, but they're not always the safest things to use. Um, they, they can't cause problems in terms of safety. So I, that's why I really like the electric ones like Instant Pot or some of the other electric pressure cookers because they're super safe. You can just walk away from it. They can double up as a slow cooker, pressure cooker, can even saute in it, just very versatile. Do you use an air fryer at all? I do. I love air frying. It's such a great way to get that crispy, crunchy flavor without any oil. So like the cauliflower wings go in there, homemade fries, and my kids love tofu air fried. I mean, that just flies out of the, the off the plate as soon as it comes out of the air fryer. That's great. Do you, you know, I, I ask this question to almost everybody who has a book and I'll get answers like, well, yeah, it's like asking me your favorite kid, but do you have a favorite recipe yourself from this book? Ah, oh, you know, that is tough. Uh, you know, I, some of my favorites are the ones that are super easy to make where I can literally get food on the table in 10 minutes because sometimes that's where I'm at. Uh, I don't have any time. I'm starving, but everyone's hungry and I just want to serve us something nutritious. So I love the quick and easy lentil soup. It's a 10 minute recipe. It's so hearty and flavorful. I love the 10 minute pasta sauce that has become a staple and so easy to put together this gourmet, beautiful pasta meal. Um, and then I love hummus because once I make hummus, it can double as uh, a snack. I can make a sandwich with it. So just lots of easy options. And, you know, the one other one I would say are the veggie burgers, like the Navy bean and kale burgers, because those are also like a 10 minute recipe where um, instead of serving frozen burgers or commercial burgers, just making them quickly and super easy and so much healthier um, than any pre-processed ones. This looks really good. Oh, yes. Yes. My daughter loves that. The broccoli and cheddar. Um, they're so good. Well, hummus, you know, you can thin it out. Hummus can be a salad dressing. Yes. And actually, I have a recipe in there doing such a thing. So it's a hummus dressing. And it's really just so lovely over salads. And uh, I've also discovered that we can freeze hummus and we can freeze the dressings. And they're so great in a pinch when you're craving a salad. All you have to do is just pull it out of the freezer, let it thaw out, and there it is. Did you know you could even dehydrate hummus? And then when you get to your location, add water? Because you can't bring hummus in through TSA a lot of times because they'll take it because it's considered a liquid, I guess, by some airports. Yeah, well, that's really helpful information um, because that would be very useful. Uh, and I know in the past I've struggled with that. They limit it to three ounces. If it's more than that, I've had to throw away perfectly good hummus 
at the TSA check-in counters and it's just heartbreaking. Here's the lasagna we were talking about earlier. I found that your daughter loves. Yeah, that is, that is great. That's just always a crowd pleaser too. There's a question in the chat where you found your beautiful stainless steel pan. Oh, uh, you know, this was nothing fancy. I think this was literally at my local TJ Maxx. I went there in the cooking section and I picked up stainless steel pans because, you know, as you know, I, I want to try to cook without oil. And then when I do, sometimes veggies get charred and then I can just take a steel wool and clean it. So I would say any stainless steel pan, just make sure the base is, feels a little heavy and solid. If it's too thin, then food tends to burn faster. Venus says, could red lentils replace the green lentils? Yeah, why not? You know, lentils are so um, versatile. You can pick whatever color you want. And I like to think sometimes what we're craving is our body's way of telling us that we need something that's in there. So go for it. Try the different ones. You may just need to adjust your cooking times because red ones cook very quickly. Yeah, they do. Lori, this is a great question because I know what the next recipe you're going to show is. She goes, does Dr. Raman eat something sweet after her meals? I wonder what a day of her eating is like. Oh, you bet I do, Lori. I have a wicked sweet tooth. Um, so I do have some great recipes in the book. I'm going to demo one of them for that you. Crumble, for example. So good. Um, and I love the black bean brownies in there. Uh, the chocolate hummus. And I like pairing like the apple crumble or the black bean brownie with the banana and ice cream. Then I feel like I'm having this just a la mode dessert that's all healthy. And I feel so good. I feel nourished afterwards. Nice. Well, we're going to show one of your dessert recipes now, chickpea blondies. Yes, let's do it. Great. Now I'm going to show you how to make chickpea blondies with a recipe from my new cookbook, Simply Plant-Based. And here is the recipe that we're going to follow. And if you're wondering chickpeas in a blondie, in a dessert, well, you are in for a treat. Chickpeas have a very smooth and neutral texture, and we're going to combine them with almond butter and maple syrup to create a really delicious blondie. Let's get started. First, we're going to combine everything in a stand mixer. We have here one can of chickpeas that are unsalted, rinsed, and strained. So we're just going to put them in here. And then we have half a cup of almond butter. And almond butter works really well in this recipe because it is a very neutral nut butter, unlike peanut butter, which tends to be strong. And then we're going to add a third of a cup of maple syrup. And then we will add two teaspoons of vanilla extract, which will give it just a delicious flavor. Okay. And then half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon each of baking powder and baking soda. So here is the salt. And then some, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And then we are going to put everything into the KitchenAid and mix it. And we'll just start at a slow speed so things don't splatter around. And we're looking for a smooth, creamy texture. And the maple syrup and almond butter are helping everything come together nicely. And once that's all blended, we'll add the best part, chocolate chips. We'll let this go for a couple of minutes. And you can adjust the speed to really get a smooth texture. It doesn't have to be completely smooth, but you don't want it very chunky either. Okay. 
Just going to let it go for another few seconds and we should be good to go. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like. I'm just going to use a spoon to scrape off whatever is stuck to the paddle. Okay, and then let me show you what the mixture looks like. So slightly chunky, it has a bit of a texture to it, which is fine. And then we're just going to mix the chocolate chips into it. So that's a third of a cup of vegan chocolate chips, which are really easy to find. So cocoa is naturally vegan. And then usually dairy milk is added to it to lighten it, but you can find plenty of non-dairy options on the market. And so there is our mixture. And now I'm just going to pour it into this baking pan right here that I've lined with parchment paper. And I love using parchment paper when I bake because that means there's no cleanup at the end. It's so much easier. Things don't get stuck. Even with non-stick pans, there can be some sticking, and this way it's much easier. Just have to make sure the paper stays in place. I'm going to spread it around into this baking pan. And I've got the oven preheated at 350 degrees. And we will bake these for about 25 minutes. And after they are done baking, we will let them cool down before we slice them. And then we can refrigerate them. So, So if you have someone in your family who's not a big fan of chickpeas, they might just surprise you by enjoying these. So right here, this is what it looks like. And now we're just going to put it in the oven for 25 minutes and then I'll show you what it looks like. Well, our blondies have been in the oven for 25 minutes and they are done baking. So this is what they look like. You can see how beautiful they look. They have a golden color on top. We can see the chocolate chips. And now what we need to do is just take them out of the baking tray. So parchment paper usually doesn't get too hot and just let them sit on a cooling tray. I don't recommend slicing it now because they will be fragile. Let them sit for about 20 minutes, cool down, and then actually you can either slice them and refrigerate them or refrigerate them and then slice them, they taste much better after they've been refrigerated for about four hours. They have the perfect texture and flavor. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Nice. Are you a PCRM cooking instructor? You know, I'm not. Um, you could be, you do a great job. <laughs> Thank you. It's I, I do love cooking. I didn't used to, but I it's something I've grown to enjoy so much over the years. Well, nobody would know the chickpeas in those. No, you know, it's really amazing. I feel chickpeas are so versatile. Sometimes I joke, I can have a three course meal just with chickpeas, you know, a hummus and then like a chickpea curry and then chickpea blondies. Uh, of course, that would not be the best option. But uh, to mix them like that. But the idea is chickpeas are really versatile with their neutral taste and they are great as dessert. Yeah, absolutely. Dina wonders if you could use tahini instead of the almond butter. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, if you have a nut allergy or you just prefer the taste of tahini, uh, I would just keep the ratio the same uh, and it should come out really well. Because tahini is often used in desserts like halva, for example. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And it, tahini also tends to have a neutral taste, so it could work very well. Mm -hmm. Especially if I think it was raw tahini, even more so than roasted. I think so. Uh, you know, I, um, I think either way would work, but whatever you have handy um, should come out really well. 
Have you ever used silicone bakeware? I haven't, uh, I, but I think you're a fan, right? I love it. I mean, because it's the cleanup so easy and I just don't have to remember to buy parchment paper then. I will have to look for that. You know, I've been using nonstick, but even with that, they're sticking. And so I use parchment paper, but it would be nice to not even have to do that. Well, nothing can really stick to it because you kind of like turn it inside out a little bit if uh, you did that. Kathy said, would peanut butter be okay if almond butter isn't available? I'd probably be better. I mean, <laughs> how could it be bad with peanut butter, right? So Kathy, this is where it's really a matter of taste. I have made it with peanut butter before because I was in your situation. I had run out of almond butter and I just had to have them. I didn't want to run to the store. Um, it, peanut butter does give it a stronger flavor. And if you like that, you may really enjoy it. Almond butter and even tahini tend to be very neutral. So it's just a matter of preference. I understand. You think you'll come out with a, a sequel to this uh, simply plant-based, more simply plant-based? <laughs> <simply> plant <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm happy that this is done for now. So I'm just enjoying working with it. Uh, but yeah, after I did my first two books, I didn't think I, I had it in me to do another one. So we'll just have to see. Yeah, right. People don't realize right? I'm, I'm in the process right now. And it's, it's, it's not as easy as one would think not just putting words on a page. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. That's probably why everybody doesn't do it. But I love the pages. I love the feel of the pages. Yeah, the, you know, they did such a great job printing the book and, and the pictures are very vibrant and um, it's just very easy to use. So I'm very happy with the way it came out. Well, I, I wish you every success with it. Do you guys have any questions either about the book, the recipes or for Dr. Raman? I, are there any other hidden treasures in PCRM that I've yet to uncover? Because I try to have everybody on the show. I've had dietitian Lee Crosby. I've had Chuck Carroll, Dr. Barnard many times, Jim Loomis a couple of times, Dr. Jim Loomis, uh, a couple of, as many of the PCRM cookies and, and cookies instructors, cooking, a Freudian slip, cooking <laughs> instructors as I can have. Are there other medical doctors there too, though, that maybe I'm not aware of that either? Yeah, we, we do. We have other medical providers and we have other dietitians. So they're all on our website at barnardmedical.org. And the other thing I really want to share with our listeners is that, you know, other than providing medical, we, we also provide a lot of terrific education programs. Uh, so a couple that I'm involved with is we do a Saturday afternoon weight loss program. It's a 12 week series. We meet every Saturday and um, one of my colleagues who's a registered dietitian and I co-teach it. And it's just a terrific way for people all over the country. And we even have some from abroad to connect and share and learn from one another. And then right now we're also running a reverse diabetes with food program, which is on Tuesday afternoons. And that's a terrific program. And, um, and if you're a Barnard Medical Center patient, we've also started a coaching program for our patients, which is a group program. Because what we find based on our research and what others have done is, um, you know, group programs work really well because people benefit so much from not only learning from us, but from one another. And that peer to peer mentoring and support is just invaluable. So please check out our programs on our events page on PCRM.org. A lot of good stuff there. Do you do these uh, via Zoom? We do. Yeah. So almost everything is now via Zoom. Something we couldn't have imagined two years ago. Everything was done in person, but um, we're discovering Zoom has been such a great way for us to really connect with people. And uh, actually, in a few weeks, we're going to have an immersion, of, um, a heart immersion, which is a four hour program on a Saturday um, to really help people learn more about cardiovascular disease, how they can prevent it. Dr. Barnard will be there. Um, Lee Crosby will be there. I'll be there. Just a lot of terrific people speaking and sharing. So again, that's on our events page too. I'll put that in the link to the show notes. And there's a question from Patty. Does the Barnard Medical Center take Medicare? We do. We take Medicare. We take um, most commercial insurance. And in the DC area, we also take DC Medicaid plans. So we, we really try to accept most insurance plans so that we can help as many people as possible. 
I can't wait. Uh, let's see how many more, uh, three and a half more years I get Medicare. Yay. <laughs> oh, you do not look like you're three and a half years. <laughs> I am. And I just said, because that's my biggest bill. It's more than my rent. You know, it, it's crazy. It is. Well, I think it's that it's the good vegan diet and your lifestyle. That's just, you look ageless. You're doing Thank amazing. You. So Jacqueline wants to know, is the book available anywhere other than Amazon? I've been posting the Amazon link. Yeah, you can also go to pcm.pcrm.org on our bookstore page and you can find the book there too. Um, so it's available on both of those sites. Nice, nice. How did you uh, decide to write the book, though? Did you did did you was did you have a publisher from the other books, and they said, "Hey, now it's time to write a cookbook." And what are your other books? So my other book, my first book, was called Stronger with Plants, and it's uh, it was really more of a self help book about educating people about nutrition. And then I, uh, a good friend from medical school, suggested that now I need to follow it up with a cookbook. So then I. Um, published a cookbook called Vegan Style. And then uh, around this same time I started working at PCRM, um, uh, the publishers for the current book, the book publishing company, um, wanted to pick up the cookbook and sort of rebrand it and update it with newer recipes and all that. So uh, that's how it started. And it was really fun because you know how it is when you cook, each time you cook, you change something and you think, oh, I like this even better now. And so it was fun for me to just update the recipes and, um, you know, just come up with more creative ways to share things. I'm guessing that everybody who works at PCRM is vegan or plant-based, right? Most people, almost everybody. Yeah. I mean, it's really our mission is to promote a healthy plant-based diet for the planet, for the animals, for our health. So it, it's really important that we are all on the same page about it. And it's, uh, for me, it's such a great place to walk into an office where I know we're all sharing the same values. Um, and, you know, if there's food on the table, it's going to be in line with what I like to eat. So I don't have to think about it. All right. Cause it's like, it's not like you have to try to influence your colleagues because they're already on the same page. Absolutely. You know, it's, 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 it's a cliche, but it really does feel like I found my tribe, you know, I go there and it's like, this is like coming home and we're all sharing this important mission and we're all eating the same way. And that just whenever we have our office potlucks, that really comes to bear when we see just how creative people are and all the great food everyone's enjoying. And it's so fun to share it. That must be very gratifying. Has any of your fellow students from medical school, the people that you went to medical school with, did they embrace the plant-based diet that you know of? Yeah, you know, I think you're bringing up an important topic, which is educating future medical students. Um, certainly medical uh, education when I was a student didn't involve much about nutrition and we are really looking to change that. And I think a lot of medical schools are recognizing that and they're using teaching kitchens, they're asking students to cook and students actually like it and patients like it. And we actually host students that come through our clinic um, from George Washington University School of Medicine. They come through our clinic and they learn about nutrition and plant-based nutrition. And then we also have students really come from all over the world to rotate through our clinic and see how we do things. That's great. There's a question. Is there a cafeteria at PCRM? There is not a cafeteria, but we will sometimes um, have caterers bring meals for purchase that we can enjoy and the staff can purchase. Nice. And there's a question about Let's see from Deb. Can you recommend a nonstick cooking pan that is healthy to use? Yeah, you know, um, there are so many great options. I think the key is to, to get a nonstick pan and then um, make sure use it as it's an advice, you know, avoid cooking with it, making it hot and then putting it under cold water that can damage it. Um, and then also when you start to see that nonstick peel, come off, that's when I recommend changing it because we certainly don't want any of those base layers to leach into our food. So, uh, but I still am very partial to stainless steel because it works so well, it's easy to clean and I love my steel wool with it. 
Um, but certainly there are good nonstick options out there too. Absolutely. What's your favorite kitchen tool or gadget? Oh, so many. Um, but the things that I use on a daily basis are a high powered blender, uh, which I didn't realize how helpful it is to make simple things like tomato sauce or uh, hummus um, or, a, or a ice cream. And then my electric pressure cooker, I love. That also gets used on a virtually daily basis. And then the next thing I would say is the air fryer. It has just changed the way we could enjoy all these foods that uh, in the oven, we can still make things, but in the air fryer, they take on a whole new level of crunchiness. So those are my three go-to appliances, um, but definitely the high powered blender is I think the most useful. Yeah, I, I agree. The air fryer, I, 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 air fryer is my number two instant pot number one, but they are very neck and neck in my house. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, the great thing about a lot of these gadgets is they make cooking easier. They simplify things. And uh, so if you have the space for it in your kitchen, they can get a little bulky. Um, they, they really are worth the, the trouble of buying them. They save so much time later on. Absolutely. Because you know what they say, pay the grocer, pay the doctor. Your choice is yours. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I'm giving you a lot of sayings today. Well, thank you so much for doing, you know, I just, I love the little videos because you're very poised, a very, very good uh, culinary instructor. If this doctor thing doesn't work out, you know, you can always... I know. <laughs> <laughs> get a job. So guys, this is the book, Simply Plant-Based. You can get it on Amazon. We'll post links. And you know, there was a question from somebody who lives in another country. If it's on something called, this is, Apple says, is it on Kobo? It's an Amazon alternative bookstore. Maybe, maybe it's not another country, but maybe some people don't want to shop on Amazon for whatever reason. Oh, I, I don't know. I would have to check with the publishers and see. Um, but it's, uh, I, you think not, she could get it on the PCRM website. There's then, then she's supporting PCRM. So if you, if you don't like Amazon for any reason, you get on PCRM's website. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, so yeah. that's a very great, and you can get it within a few days after you order it on our website. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a Kindle version? No, you know, we didn't do a Kindle version because we really wanted people to see the pictures. And uh, at least for me, I'm such a visual um, cook that if I see it, that gets me all excited about putting the meal together. So um, it's a little trickier with cookbooks on Kindle, but certainly. You know well, when I see this picture, I want to make that. Let me tell you. Right now. <laughs> so, I agree. Well, thank you so much. And, and I wish you every six. Oh, look, the back of the book. Cookies. Actually, you know, you're the second person who said that, but those are actually donuts. They're chocolate okay. donuts. Oh my God, they look like chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> That's okay. Either way, I'm sure they're delicious. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Rahman. And please, anytime you want to come on, we love anybody from PCRM to grace the show with their presence. Oh, thank you so much, Chef AJ. And thank you for all that you're doing with your podcast and the cooking demos. I know many of my patients loved your Thanksgiving um, meal planning that you did. Doing um, another one this year with like eight chefs. So make sure you are going to do it this time. We're doing it like a week before because everybody said it was great, but it was too late. You did it on Thanksgiving day. So we're going to do it the week before. So everybody can get the recipes. Yeah, I love that. And I will be sure to share that with our right. staff. Well, thank you so much. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have another fabulous plant-based physician, Dr. Jeffrey Pierce. Take care, Dr. Ramon. Say hi to everybody at PCRM. Thank you. Thank